Blessed are the peacemakers. Thursday. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17. So this one um, took me a minute to process. So um, let's go down through it, how it landed on me. And of course, you might have gotten something totally different from this in your time with God. And um, that is, of course, perfectly fine. But this is... This is how my time of meditation went. First of all, I just thought it was kind of, I don't know, ironic, pretty. Um, I think he meant it to be kind of interesting that he says, strive for peace with everyone. Um, if you're going to be a person of striving, then that striving should be for peace. Um, and also strive for the holiness that um, without which no one will see the Lord and who will see God but the pure of heart. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. And so that holiness, insert everything that we've prayed through about purity of heart from last week. The purity of heart, the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Um, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. Help everyone find grace. And then it says that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble. Now that doesn't necessarily mean, um, he's not talking about necessarily bitterness here. If God spoke to you about something about bitterness, so that was super valid. Listen to God in that. But at the baseline, what the text is really doing is it's quoting Deuteronomy that talks about not letting bitter fruit, something bitter, into the community that would then spoil the community. Like a few rotten apples and a bunch of apples can spoil the whole bunch. So don't let bitter fruit ruin the crop. And a specific example is given. Sexually immoral. Or other things that are unholy outside of the purity of heart. And this is not works-based behavior modification here. If we want to have eyes fixed on Jesus, if we want to live in the kingdom of God here and now, then that means submitting to his rule and his reign, which is his glory and our joy. It's how we find true love. It's how we abide in grace. It's how we experience and produce the fruits of the spirit, which is all the best parts of all of life. And the way to do that, sin rejects that. Sin chooses it our own way. And, and doing that being, that, being unholy, not pure in heart like that, is like Esau, who sold his inheritance for a mill. Sin, diverting our attention, Splitting the purity of our hearts between the ways of the world, our own kingdom, and God's kingdom. Sin is like receiving a pot of lentil in the place of an inheritance. Choosing the immediate self-gratification instead of the present abiding rule and reign of the love of God. And there are irrevoc irrevocable consequences for some sins. The sin that Esau commit, committed, he rejected his inheritance and he could not get that inheritance back. That doesn't mean he wasn't able to be forgiven by God. It just means he had lost that inheritance. It was a that momentary break with what was in line with the kingdom of God had irrevocable consequences. So what does all this have to do with being a peacemaker? Well, peace, part of being a peacemaker is living with a purity of heart and working as a community to seek a communal purity of heart. What does it mean to be a community that helps lead each other toward purity of heart? Thus, seeing God together. Thus, abiding in peace together. Making peace with each other. Being the body of Christ. Blessed 
are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God.